Good morning, it's currently Thursday the 10th of October and we have a super rainy day today. So grab yourselves a cozy drink and settle in for another autumn vlog. I have got a few jobs to do. I need to go into our local town. It's around about a 10 minute walk. So we'll go through the nature reserve. Of course, when I'm in town, I'll pop around the charity shops because I have to do that. I can't walk past a charity shop without just having a sneaky peek inside. You just never know what's behind those doors. If something is there, it will find me. It is cozy sock weather. I'm gonna need my raincoat this morning. I could not be more happy. And I think today I'm gonna to go for a pumpkin spice cake Nespresso capsule. Let's head off into town. I'm gonna to pop the washing machine on a spin. It's bed linen day today, so I love those days. I'm looking forward to already getting into bed and reading my book and it's half past nine in the morning. Right, come on, let's get moving. I love a rainy day. My mum would often say to my sister and I, go and put your Wellington boots on and your raincoats and just go and dance in the garden and then come in for a nice, warm, cozy drink. I wonder if that's why I love the rain so much because it reminds me of those nostalgic memories that I had as a child. We are very lucky to have this on our doorstep. It is beautiful every single season and it only takes us 10 minutes from ours through this nature reserve to get to town. It's, it's the dream, honestly. When it's raining, I love to get outside to get home. I could never get bored of being down here. It makes me so happy. I permanently have a smile on my face. I am walking through the most beautiful autumn trees. This is Broadway Gardens. It's just the other side of town. And I thought I'd take a quick walk around because it's absolutely stunning here. This is how beautiful it is living in the first garden city in England. It's just beautiful here. Our hopes my eyes are always miles down the road We must be moving faster than we know And we know Goodbye I've always had a problem with goodbye I wipe away the pain for it tries before it's 
In my head, I'm running through the things I left unsaid, and others that I wish I could take back. Can't take it back. So tonight, I'm chasing cars on Highway 90. We're heading home for some lunch. I'm going to make some stewed apple. On the way home, I was distracted. Of course I was distracted by nature. I always, always am. My mum absolutely loved this time of year. In particular, she loved maple trees. She would find a leaf of every shade and then get home, pop them in a vase and just look at them for a couple of weeks. There is a tree that I walked past today that my mum would often stop at. She'd pick up every shade. So today, in memory of my mum, I have picked up lots of maple leaves and I thought it might be quite nice if we... Hello! Are you beautiful? Hello! Oh. <laughs> oh. Beautiful dog. It's lovely down here, I just love it so much. Uh, I don't know if I've said that a million times already, but literally I will say it every time I'm down here. So I picked up these maple leaves in every single shade and I thought this afternoon we could have a go at making a sustainable autumn garland. home from a glorious morning in town. This is very typically British weather. It started off raining and dark and now it's full sunshine. It is cold. It's definitely cold. Let's see what I've picked up in town today. Nothing from the charity shops. I did pop into Miss Greenfingers which is a local coffee shop and deli. I've picked up two slices of goat's cheese quiche we're going to have that tonight with some vegetables. Butternut squash, I'm going to hopefully experiment with the recipe next week. Some fresh Granny Smith apples ready for our stewed apple lunch and also some large mushrooms. One of my favourite lunches at the moment is sourdough toast with fried mushrooms, fried tomatoes, balsamic vinegar and oil, a dollop of hummus, pumpkin seeds, so delicious. I popped into Poundland just for a little mooch around there and then I went around the corner to Home Bargains. They didn't have loads in there but I did find a few sort of Halloween autumn treats. I couldn't leave without getting a little chocolate pumpkin and a little chocolate ghost. I thought they were really really cute and 89 pence. Skeleton shortbread biscuit kit, I just thought it would be a little bit of fun. I think it was under two pounds, I can't remember the exact price, but it includes the shortbread mix, icing, pen and the cutter. I just thought, oh, that would be a little bit of fun. Maybe next week we can give this a go and we can compare my skeletons to this little skeleton here. <laughs> I'm already laughing because I have got no idea. I'm not great with icing and decorating, but I will give it a go. I picked up lots and lots of maple leaves. This is just autumn in my hand. We plan this afternoon to make an autumn garland. If you want to follow along with me, head outside, grab some leaves. You'll need an iron to dry the leaves out. You'll need some ribbon or some jute or some tie of some sort, maybe a hole punch or a hot glue gun, something like that. I'm super hungry for some stewed apples. We need four apples. I'm gonna use up one of my cooking apples and then I've also got some Granny Smith. A bit of a juice of a lemon. 
You'll also need a quarter of a cup of dried fruit. Today I'm using sultanas. I like to put just a little sprinkle of sugar in my stewed apple just to sweeten it up a little bit. I'm going to use some cinnamon in my stewed apple. You could use allspice, you could use nutmeg, you could use cloves, honey or maple syrup. And then you need one cup of water. lunch on a tray sometimes it is just the simplest things that can make you so happy db's at the office today so today's a thursday normally he's at home mm, so good i was really craving some stewed apple it's the first lot of stewed apple that i've made this season thankfully there's enough left because gb will definitely want some of this it's so nice with just natural yogurt i'm definitely going to have to get some more of the stewed apple i'll be back Welcome if you are new to my channel. I'm Cher and I love all things seasonally based, slow living, the simple joys in life. I'm particularly drawn to autumn and winter and then spring and then the summer. I'm not a huge fan of the heat that we have in the UK. I always feel like we're not really prepared for it and when it hits it's just like whoa it's just too much. And I feel like seasons ground me. They ground me because it means that I'm in tune with nature. It really means that I can be more mindful and I can see the beauty in every day. I love autumn and I love winter, then spring, then summer. I mean, I love all the seasons, but I would definitely say that I find autumn and winter more in keeping with me and being cosy and snuggling down. GB hates that word snuggling. Quite often we're told that we come alive in the spring and the summer is when we go outside and be joyful. For me I find it the opposite. I find that I like to get out and about on a misty cold morning or on the first frost. That's when my soul is saying get outside share, just get outside and enjoy it. I love the crunching in the leaves. I love putting on boots and the coziness of my favorite coat, holding a coffee in my hand. It did get me thinking that some of us love the autumn and love the winter. I really do understand if you are finding it more challenging for whatever reason. I'm really hoping that this channel brings a warm, cozy, inviting place for you. A place where you feel at home and that you've got a friend. I'm here sharing the slowest of moments, the happiness in the smallest of things. May that be seasonal cooking or a seasonal walk, popping into a few shops to do some window shopping or doing a little bit of craft in an afternoon. I do need to get some jobs done this afternoon, particularly in our bedroom. There's a little bit of sorting, a little bit of cleaning to do in there, changing the bed, just that sort of thing. If I get my jobs done, I'm gonna stop and we can do some crafting. How are you feeling? How are you feeling now? When all the pieces seem like they can't be found. I'll be the friend that is standing there I'll be the hand holding all your cares I see you now, I'm not going anywhere We'll find our way back home We'll find our way back home Now we'll never have to walk alone We'll find our way back Oh
tiny little space. I am one of those girls who has got a drawer under the bed full of books so that when I need to swap one, I don't have to go anywhere. I just open my drawer because I sleep this side, obviously. I open my drawer and my books will be there. It was a little bit muddled. I just started piling books on top of one another. During the autumn, there is nothing that I love more than to get cozy in the evening and settle down with a good book. If you have seen the office makeover over on my channel, this was a surprise for my other half, GB. He has got a library's worth of books. I got myself in such a state with sorting out his bookshelves and he's very, very precious about his books. I organise mine by colour. I can visualise the book that I want by the front cover or the spine and that is how the books are going to go back. I thought I'd share with you some of the books that I own, some of the books that I absolutely love and some of the ones I'm yet to read. If you love reading, you are in the right place. There's no murders in my books, there's no crime, there's nothing too sad. Um, think Channel 5 Christmas film with maybe a little bit more depth. The authors that I love are Carol Matthews. That's just reminded me. When GB and I first of all got together, Carol Matthews, who lives over in Milton Keynes, that's about a 40 minute drive from here, she had written a story based in Hitchin, which you probably know by now is one of our local towns and Hitchin will always hold our hearts. Anyway, the year that the book was released, Carol came over to town and she signed everybody's books. Well, I didn't know this, but wait for it because this is incredibly romantic. GB turned up after me and he spoke to Carol and explained that I had been reading her books for many, many years. I was a super fan. Anyway, they got talking and it was around Christmas time, which is when my birthday falls. So she said something like, are you doing anything for Cher's birthday? And GB replied, yes, we're going away. We tend to go to a Christmas market or something like that around my birthday. So he said, yeah, we're going away. And he made a joke and said something like, and if you've got a new book out around that time, I'll probably be buying that for her for her birthday. And she replied and said, do you think that Cher would like a video call on her birthday? GB was a little bit taken back. I think he's got that warm personality that people just like. And he said, oh, I'm sure that she would absolutely love that. Anyway, roll forward to my birthday. I had this phone call with Carol and it lasted about an hour. And it was just chit chat about normal life. And I was just a bit taken aback, really. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> I've been reading her books for years and she video called me. I just can't believe it. I absolutely love Carol Matthews as an author, but I also like Millie Johnson and Lucy Diamond. And I'm sure there are a few others in here that I can share with you. I'm chit-chatting as I normally do, and I'm not getting much done. I really want to get that craft done. I've got so many books here. This just makes me so happy. So, but let me tell you about a few that I really, really just need to tell you about. So this one is called The Art of Making Memories. It's just a great book to help you slow down, think about life, think about the things that really, really matter. So that was a present from GB in 2019. The Art of Making Memories. I love that book so much. As you probably can imagine, this is a very me book. It's called Telling the Seasons, Stories, Celebrations and Folklore Around the Year. So this one is an October story and the story is called The Fairy Ring. It's a lovely book if you're into seasonal living like I am. I'm going to show you these books at the same time. They're both called Hygge and this is about the Danish way of finding happiness. I've had these for many, many years. I think from about 2015, I would say. This is the start of me really noticing the seasons and slowing down. I would never get rid of these. These are my go-to books. I pick them up regularly. It was this picture that inspired my pantry drawer in the kitchen. I find that having everything labelled and aesthetically pleasing 
makes cooking so much more joyful. I found this book in a charity shop and I look at it so much. It's The Country Set, A Celebration of Britain's Best Loved Wildlife by Hannah Dale. Inside this book are such beautiful illustrations and then a little bit of text about the British wildlife. I just love it. Such a gorgeous book, one of my favourites. Something a little bit vintage now. These stories were my absolute favourite as a child. This is the Bramley Hedge Autumn Story. Let's have a look inside. The pictures in here are just so, so dreamy. Great for children's imagination. Let's show you one more picture. I mean, autumn in a story. Isn't it gorgeous? So I have the autumn and I have the winter, the spring, but unfortunately I'm still on the hunt for the summer story. I often get messages on Instagram asking for reading lists for holidays. I've even had a friend of mine message to say that she was going on her honeymoon. What books should she take? If you love the authors that I've mentioned or you like rom-com with a little bit of depth then do follow me on Instagram because I often share what I'm reading, how many stars I give a book and you can always message and ask for recommendations for holidays, Christmas, honeymoons etc etc. I do take off the paper front cover, I've always done that. I find it really annoying when I'm reading but I do keep them so that when I've finished and I hand them on to a friend or to a charity shop I pop them back on but to read and for it to look nice in the drawer I always always take the covers off. <laughs> There's a few Christmassy ones, always in December, the most wonderful time of the year, Christmas carols and a Cornish cream tea, the Christmas past, a cosy Christmas at Bridget's Bicycle Bakery, the Cornish cream tea Christmas, the Christmas postcards, I think I'll be having a Christmas at home reading, the Merry Christmas project, Merrily Ever After. There's lots of Christmas books. There's one there as well. One more Christmas at the castle. Books that are not Christmassy. The Vintage Shop. The Switch. Book Lovers. I Remember Paris. Last Time We Met. Someone Else's Shoes. Happy Place. Pre-Loved. There's Dear Dolly. I'm currently reading The People on Platform 5 and it's absolutely brilliant. That's my book drawer. All done. Right. It's now quarter past four and I thought it would be a good idea to start thinking about our craft. I've just made myself a fruit tea, I've popped some lemon inside. I'm really keen to make a sustainable autumn garland using the leaves that I found earlier on. You will need some ribbon. I bought this in Hobbycraft just last week for the autumn wreaths that I'd made. You will need some leaves. I have just flattened mine with a book as you could see. You'll also need an iron without the steam on so that you can dry out the leaves. And then you will need something to attach the leaves to the ribbon. So can't find my hole punch anywhere, but I do have a glue gun. Right, the first job I'm going to do is cut the ribbon. So I've actually measured this. The garland is going to go in our front room, in our main room. Cut the ribbon. I'm gonna take off my steam, that one. This is very therapeutic. When you iron a leaf, there's an autumn smell. As I mentioned earlier, my mum used to love maple leaves. She would go out and collect her leaves and then come home and then almost put them together like a puzzle, working out the colour spectrum. Where would each leaf sit? I'm not sure how I'm going to put these on the garland. If to go in colour order or 
random. I'm thinking random. To preserve the garland, you could always cover it in PVA glue. I sound like such a teacher. If you didn't know already, my background is in teaching. I'm an early years, I'm an early years advisor now, but I used to be an early years teacher. I've taught nursery and reception. So I know all about PVA glue and PVA glue just over the top of these leaves would preserve them. Young children could put these up against the window and you would see the light come through. These are the ones that have been ironed. Isn't it lovely looking at each leaf? Tuning into the seasons can make you so mindful. Once you know where your local maple tree is, then you'll know this for every year. We live in a garden city. Every single street is lined with a different set of trees. Go ahead and iron your leaves and I'll see you very soon. All the leaves have been ironed and they are so beautiful. Just look at them. There's no need to buy plastic leaves when they are in the environment already. Isn't that just gorgeous? I can really see why my mum loved doing this. Even collecting the leaves and ironing them. What a lovely activity to do with young children or with grown-ups alike. You can really see how each leaf is incredibly different. I think this is my favourite one. Your next job is to cut off the stems from each leaf. Now we're going to make the garland. Because we don't know how many leaves we've got, find the centre of your ribbon by putting the two ends together, running all the way along, just to find the centre. That is where you will want to start. I'm going to lay my ribbon out ready. I'm just going to overlap. Doesn't need much. I'm going to go randomly. overlapping. Oh, a bit hot. Do be careful. Try and keep the ribbon nice and flat. Just add in one or two to each side just so that I can keep it central. If you're using a glue gun with children, please be careful. So the glue gun gets so hot. There's my favourite one. I think I need to put that one in the middle. Where's the middle? What a lovely way to celebrate the new season. I'm going to put it there. That special one. The glue guns worked really well actually. I did burn myself once. Other than that, it's been okay. It's absolutely beautiful. Right, shall we get this up? There it is, our beautiful maple autumn leaf garland. I absolutely love it. I can't quite believe where the time has gone. GB's just walked through the door and it's time for me to get ready and go swimming. So I will see you when I get back. Yeah. 
Coco, we are in from the gym. I'm absolutely starving though. The quiche from the deli is going into the oven very shortly. We've got some herby potatoes. I just need to grab some mint. We're gonna have the quiche, herby minty potatoes and some broccoli for dinner tonight. I'm feeling quite tired. It's quarter to nine and I am so ready for bed. I think because I know I've got fresh sheets on the bed, it just makes me want to put Classic FM on the radio. I'm gonna put my glasses on and I'm gonna carry on reading my book. I mentioned earlier that I'm reading The People on Platform 5 by Claire Pooley. This is such a great book. It's about six different characters who all travel on the same train. The story entwines every character. It's not scary. If you are looking for a good read for any time of the year, this is a great one. It will really keep you wanting to turn the pages. I'm definitely gonna get into bed and read. I'll probably read a couple of pages and then I'll fall asleep. But the idea is that I read a little bit more than that. 